today we are going to discuss about the slob technique so that same lingual opposite buckle also known as clark's technique so this is quite a small topic nevertheless it's very important from examination point of view most of the times you get an mcq from this and also from clinical perspective it is very important as it has various clinical applications the tooth is a three dimensional structure now when we take a radiographic image a radiographic image is two dimensional image so it's obvious that we are going to miss one dimension how that works is let's consider a mandibular first molar so it is a multi rooted tooth and if we view it a 2d image so we can just see these are the distal and the mesial roots and we can see just a single root canal in its roots so this is from the buccal side if we view the tooth from the mesial side then we come to know that there are two roots present one buccal and one lingual in the mesial root which we were not able to see when we took a buccal view so this is how the orientation of the root canal changes when we view the tooth in different dimensions so walton introduced an important refinement in dental radiography so he demonstrated a simple technique to visualize this third dimension so in this image initially when the central x-ray beam was directed parallel to the x-ray film so we can just see there is superimposition of the canals we can view a single canal in each root of the mandibular first molar whereas if we change the angulation of the central x-ray beam to 20 degrees mesial to the film then we are now able to appreciate two canals in both the roots of the first molar which here you can see is marked by the black arrows so this is known as walton's projection wherein the roots can be made to open up which is done by directing the central beam to 20 to 30 degrees from the mesial so the two canals in each root can be easily discerned in practice it is frequently necessary to extract three dimensional information to allow better spatial localization of structures the most frequently used and most easily performed method for this is the buccal object rule also known as clark's rule cone shift technique tube shift technique image shift technique or the slob technique it was described by clark in 1910 and refined and amplified by richards in 1953 and 1980 so the object that moves in the same direction as the cone is located towards the lingual so that same lingual the object that moves in the opposite direction from the cone is located towards the buccal so that's opposite buccal so the acronym is s l o b same lingual opposite buccal stated more simply ingles rule is mbd that is always shoot from the mesial and the buccal root will be to the distal so if we take an example here so this is the lower jaw and suppose that there is an object placed lingual to the mandibular second premolar so when we shoot the x-ray from the buccal aspect so it passes through the lingual object but we are not able to discern whether the object is present lingual or buccal to the second premolar then we change the orientation of the x-ray beam remember that the direction of the x-ray beam is discerned by the back of the tube so here the tube head moves mesially the lingual object appears to have moved mesially in the radiographic image now it is present between the first and the second premolars so comparing these two images we can ascertain that the object is present lingual to the second premolar because in the second image the object has moved in the same direction as the movement of the tube head taking another example here of mandibular molars during an endodontic procedure so the first image is a horizontal projection with four files which appear superimposed on one another and in the second image the horizontal variance has been changed by 30 degrees and now you can see that both the roots have two canals each so first image gives us an impression that they are just one root canal in each root but when we change the orientation then we can identify two canals in each of the roots so here's another example so here the files are inserted in the second premolar but take a look at the 
first molar then you can see that in the first image the mesobuccal root appears to be superimposed on the palatal root whereas when the orientation is changed then in the second image you can see the palatal root and the mesobuccal root appear separated so you can easily discern the root canal in the mesobuccal root so how this happens is this is a cross section of a multi-rooted tooth let's say mandibular first molar so there is the mesial and the distal root and the empty space corresponds to the root canal in each of the roots now the in the first image the x-ray beam passes directly through the thickness of the root structures so in this case the buccal and the lingual portions of the root are in the same path which is indicated by the arrows if we change the orientation of the x-ray beam by 20 degrees from the mesial so the central beam passes through the hourglass shaped root at an angle so in this case two thicknesses of the root are projected separately onto the film now because the less tooth structure is penetrated by the x-ray the image on the film is less dense so this was about the slop technique now let's take a look at some of the applications of slop technique location of hidden roots or apices prior to surgery procedures so in cases where epicoectomy or apical surgeries are to be performed there in in those cases you need to discern the position of the apical foramen so in the first image you can see apical foramen of the upper right central incisor it rests on the same plane as the path of x-ray so it so it does not actually indicate its position it could be placed either buccally or palatally it just gives the idea that it is curved but we are not sure in which direction now in the second image you can see so we have moved the tube distally and the apical foramen appears to have moved mesially so from this we can interpret that the apical foramen has a buccal curve because it has moved opposite to the movement of the tube to move anatomical landmarks such as the zygomatic or malar process to improve visualization of root apices so in the first image you can see the upper first molar uh, the shadow of the zygomatic process which completely obscures the apex of the palatal root whereas in the second image when the x-ray machine has been angled mesiodistally and also slightly coronoapically the shadow of the zygomatic process has been removed and we can easily visualize the root canal to determine the number, location, shape, size and direction of roots during non-surgical endodontic procedure with particular reference to working length determination. So here you can see the working length of the distobuccal canal is checked and then the x-ray machine has been angled distomesially and the palatal and distobuccal roots now appear superimposed whereas we are able to easily discern the mesiobuccal root. To distinguish between normal anatomic landmarks and those associated with periapical pathosis. So this is an example of a maxillary left central incisor and you can appreciate a small roundish radiolucency which is superimposed on the apex. So a second radiograph is now taken with a mesodistal angulation. So now the radiolucency appears to be no longer related to the apex of the root. So it is evident that it lies on the more buccal plane. So it can therefore be either the incisor or a nasal, or it could represent the nasopalatine foramen. This is another example in case of mandibular teeth. So you can appreciate a radiolucency in relation to the lower second premolar, which could indicate a lesion of endodontic origin. When you take a second radiograph at distomesial angulation, it confirms that the radiolucency is not associated with the apex of the root of the second premolar and it is most probably the mental foramen. A third radiograph is taken with coronoapical angulation which confirms once again that the structure is more buccal with respect to the apex of the second premolar hence it is the mental foramen. Important landmarks such as the inferior alveolar canal, mental foramen and maxi sinus when anticipating periapical surgery so this is an example of a dried mandible wherein a metallic wire has been introduced in the mandibular spine in order to demonstrate the mandibular canal 
and when we take a second radiograph with a greater corona apical angulation so it confirms that it is the canal is placed more lingual with respect to the apices of the second and third molars to locate the embedding of foreign bodies following oral trauma so this is the radiograph of a patient who claimed to have been hit with shot you can appreciate a round radiographic image which is seen at the level of the apex of the distal root that might represent a hunting shot but when we take a second radiograph in a meso distal angulation so this it showed that the shot is not in contact with the apex of the root but it is more buccal so these were a few examples of the practical application of the buccal object rule which can and must be applied each time the spatial location of two anatomical entities or structures one buccal and the other lingual or palatal must be determined i hope you have liked this presentation please do like share comment and subscribe to the channel thank you